Yeah, let me hit my line just then. <laughs> I freaked him out, Jack. Something's got me by the foot. Oh my God. <laughs> that was funny there. That big jump fly out of the water. Something had him by the foot. <laughs> that was hilarious. What we got, guys? Well, we got a stick or a fish. It's heavy. Can't tell what this float on here. We get to dealing with these fish in really, really deep water, and it's hard to tell what's going on. Right, let's see what we got, man. Yeah, it ain't pulled back at all. I think we got a piece of wood. It is a baby catfish. Not no baby baby, but for this late, this is a little one. That dude never fought, man. Oh, he's tangled in the line. Just a wrapper upper. Got dude's belly all blowed up. He flowed upside down, we put some slack on him. All right, I'm gonna bogey grip this guy. Fish, All right, guys, this is what we're gonna work on today. This is one of these floats that you keep seeing me fish with. It's um basically a piece of PVC pipe inside of a pool noodle. It's got a um, swivel in it, and it's a pretty basic thing. We're gonna try to build one for you here and show you how this thing works. So we'll set this one out of the way. Yeah, what I basically start with is a piece of pole noodle, and it's just a piece of about half inch. I usually use the thick wall. It'll fit up inside the pole noodle. And I put it up in the noodle and just cut this thing on the chop saw. It kind of keeps the end of it fairly straight. You're not gonna get it perfect, but it's a lot closer than what you think it is. You're gonna need the pipe. You're gonna need the noodle. You're gonna need a screw. I just use a two inch drywall screw. You could use a stainless one if you want to. And I think this is a one alt barrel swivel. And the only other thing you're gonna need is some duct tape. And this is what it's gonna take to make this thing happen. You're gonna need a, um, Screwdriver work your spine and a drill, something to knock a hole in this pipe with. Let me get this stuff. I'm just gonna set it out of the way here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to figure how to insert this swivel into this pipe. Um, I usually will take this thing and about and about set this at about this level right here. It's um, leafy enough so your swivel can swing around good. If you pull it down to about right there, you get a no, I no more swivel action because it's just up inside of this hollow part on this pipe. So I usually put this thing about in that area right there. That keeps your line from being able to wrap around this little section right here. So what we do to do that with is we take us a marker of some kind. We hold our pipe down on there. Just remember, this is complicated now. And we mark a hole. We're gonna drill that guy right there. As far as how to get the right bit, I mean, what I do is I, um, just take the bit out of the container right there and attempt to stick the screw down in there. 
it's going right there kind of tight you can see we get some threads right there it will go down in there but not very tight so we're going to use this this is a 764 and like i say that's a two inch just a regular drywall screw yeah a lot of people use a stainless screw but i found that the pool noodle won't hold up any longer than the screw does so so the next thing we're going to do is take our drill Get the area, I mean, remember this isn't rocket science, man. We're just drilling a little hole right here to pop a screw, please. We're gonna drill all the way through this thing. Probably don't wanna hold it in your hand like that in case you drill through. And the object of this is gonna be to put the screw in here and we're just gonna shoot the screw all the way through here. I usually do this to get the threads lined up. Once you get it started, you can look across most of the time it's going to actually go across but you can look inside right here and line that screw up with that hole but like i say most of the time it's just going to go across and i'll shoot that thing on in there one time make sure you get your hand out the way there and just get it started right there so this is what we end up with um it's got a little burr right there where that drill bit came out of it, so I'm just gonna cut that off. We knock that out of the way. And this is pretty much like what we're gonna have when we get started here. I usually take this noodle, and what I'm doing right here is I'm putting this hole on the edge of that noodle right there. And like I say, it's not rocket science, so doesn't look just right then it ain't no big deal you're gonna be able to move it around so we're just gonna take a mark right here and this is about where we're gonna pop that screw in right here yeah we just take our screw and pop it in the hole punch it through to where you can just see it start to come out on the inside we're going to take and align the hole we want to line the hole up and pull that out just a little bit. We're going to line this hole up with this screw. We're trying to make sure we're in line right here. And like I say again, it's not rocket science, so don't get worried about it. We're just going to push it through and see can we get the screw started. You see it went right in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to run this screw inside of this pipe. So I got the screw over to about right here. Then the next thing we're gonna do is take our, our swivel, put it down into this little piece of pipe. This is the only tricky part of it, really. And just put the swivel over the screw. Get it hooked in there. It's hooked on that screw. Then the only thing we're gonna do is pop this thing on through there. I usually would, will run a screw up in there about halfway up inside that noodle like that. Now you got screw to about right here and screw to about right here and it's actually hooked together. There's no need to glue this thing or anything. This right here will hold it. So, so far we cut our pipe and our noodle, drilled a hole through, put a snap on it, and it, it, it leaves it with, with just a piece just like this you can see it's trapped inside and the next thing to do is our next thing is we're going to um just just take some duct tape i usually pull me a piece off to start with about long enough to go around that noodle. It doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, you pull, you just pull the tape off. You can do this any way that you want to. There's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever it takes for you to get it to work for you. This is just my, the way that I do it. And I line this up. Stick it on there. And I will just take and pull this tape around the edge of this thing. If you need a little bit more tape, it's no big deal. 
pull your thumb off, bring it around, and I usually will overlap this about an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. Cut it off. Pull it down. Pull you another piece. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing. The only difference is this time we're gonna line it up on that edge right there. Pull it around. Get it started. And we just use that edge of that noodle right there because really it's hard to cut these things perfectly square. If you figure out how to do that, how about leave me a comment? I usually get close, but not quite. And we're just gonna wrap this around. Again, we'll cut this tape. That about has it. It's, um, it's big enough to hold your weight, your float, whatever you wanna do. There's, there's many, many ways to, to uh, fish this thing. One of the ways I'll do is I'll throw the line out behind me and I'll hook a planer, a planer clip to this. All right guys, just a couple of ways we'll rig this. I'm gonna use this as uh, just an example of our main line so, cause it's easy to see here. You just take that snap and snap it over the main line and you got the leader rig hooked off on this side right here and this will be your main line going back up to your um, rod and reel. I'll take and put just a regular planer board clip on this thing. Um, I got the planer board clip hooked in with a piece of wire tie just through the eye of the snap right here. And I'll take this and just hook it back on that main line and clip it on there and it will, um, it'll hold it to keep it from sliding up and down the line there. Um, I'll use this a lot of times when I drag, especially if you're dragging in really shallow water and you kind of, your boat makes a lot of noise. I know we don't, we don't think it does, but you got depth finders and bait tanks and all kind of stuff running on that thing. And that, that depth finder clicks, click, 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 and it's loud. And your trolling maker, motor's making noise. You got wind slap against the hull. And all those things will make some noise. So I've taken let out line behind me. And if you'll watch some of my videos, you'll actually see me do this. Um, one of them where I went and fished Monticello for the first time, nearly every fish I caught that day was on a, rig, on a float rig. I will hook this thing up like this and let it out behind the boat, just like you're gonna fish a long line or a planter board, use it the same way. And that holds your stuff on there, you reel the fish back up to you, you can either just unclip this and let this go down your line, or you can take it off, it doesn't matter either way. Just pop the thing loose, unhook it off your main line, and I'll show y'all guys right here. I just got, you see the swivels down inside. I just took a small wire tie and an old painter board clip. I think the little nipple's gone out of this one inside, so it won't hold on the planers as well anymore. And I just stuck it through there, so you hooked on just like that. Clip holds it to your main line so you don't lose it, and this keeps it from sliding up and down. One of the ways I hook this up is, I, I got my main line that goes to my rod. It's tied to a, just a big snap twill. A one-off is plenty, I think this may be a two or three or something that I had just uh, laying around. And you can either hook it into this. I like to hook it to this eye right here. And then I'll take the snap coming out of the float. This lets this kind of run hanging down like that. It'll let it hang down. And I'll take a piece of line, a leader line, and this has got a, a circle hook snailed on it. And just however deep you want to go is um, how deep you want to run this thing. 
I was fishing in a place the other day that the flats were about five feet deep. So when I decided I was going to, to uh, cast some floats out on these flats, I took this and this is, it's just a double overhand knot. You just pull this line down like this and just tie it back through here and I'll run it back through there twice. Pull it down tight, clip your leader off. I'm gonna untie that part right there cause I just wanted to show you how to tie that knot. And we're gonna clip this line that's going to the hook here onto this thing here, hook it on this snap swivel. And this is what we end up with. We end up with a line that comes out the front that it hooks you to the rod. And you got this, the line runs out to this snap, to this uh, hook right here. And you just got whatever length leader you fishing, whatever water you're fishing with. I mean, if you fishing in 10 feet of water, you need probably a five foot piece of line hanging off. Most of the times, if, you, if you're not fishing in river current, most of the times I fish in reservoir. So what I'm talking about is a reservoir application. Um, you just take this thing and hook it up. I don't usually fish a piece of weight on it. You could put a little split shot on it, but most of the times the hook and the cut bait will hold that thing down. I just hook a piece of cut or live bait on this thing. Usually if I am gonna fish live bait, then I'll fasten the wood uh, split shot up on this line to kind of help hold him down in the water. But that's the way you can keep that thing hooked up. And myself, I'll take and I got this tied with a slide on it, sinker slide. So if I decide I'm going to fish on the bottom, I'll put my weight on here and I'll just clip this line into this main line snap right here. and I'll just fish it just like I usually do. Just take this thing and hook it back in here. And that will let me fish some weight, just like the Carolina rig. And if you wanna put the, the float on it, you're able to put the float on it. And those are, that's just something I started doing here a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm just learning. I've only been fishing for these things for about two years, so I'm just learning about it. And I hope this will help you out. I hope this will, it's exciting, man. I, I love to watch this float go under the water. It just brings back that time when I was a kid. But it's just a technique. This is uh, the way to build a thing. These things will last about a year or so. I put the tape around the outside mostly to protect the noodle. A lot of times if I'm fishing where there's current and lay down trees, I'll, the trees here, and I'll sit above this thing and throw it, and I'll let these floats float all the way down up against that tree. And with that, it lets me fish really tight to cover, and it also uh, protects your float. He pull you down in that tree, and it, it'll rip this stuff. It's not that super strong, but you see it's, it's in there good. There's no need to glue it. That way if the noodle gets rotten, peel the tape off of it, take the screw out, put you another piece of noodle on it. And I hope that helps y'all out. Tight lines, have good luck.